It's out. Yeah, that's true. There you go. Everybody has blue eyes today. <laughs> Lovely. Um, no, it's okay. It's tough. Everybody is really hard being modeled. That's why it's hard. That's why it's like not as easy as you think. <laughs> Lovely. That's lovely, Chloe. Everybody looks great. Okay, what is it? Thank you. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> So growing up my body hair was kind of part of the process where I was trying to take take back my body in a way from the rest of the world to say that actually it's my body, I need to be able to to do whatever I want with it. It's not, you know, I don't want to spend the rest of my life trying to mould myself into some sort of ideal feminine, you know, form. It's not, that's not what my body's for. Well, I know at first I did shave. I went and tried shaving my legs and everything, but unfortunately um, I have permanent goose flesh. I think you know what that means. And so I always catch that with the razor. And so it was one of those things where it's, right, I can either be hairy or I can have blood dripping down my arm. Which do I want? <laughs> so that I decided after I think probably only about 10 attempts of doing it. This isn't right, <laughs> something's wrong. Mm. So I went out and bought wax strips and I did not enjoy that experience at all. <laughs> so I was probably only about 14 when I decided to stop shaving and waxing regularly. My mother didn't let us shave anything, so uh, yeah. So that's what started it was that we, weren't, we didn't have permission to do it as children. So my mother, I'm not entirely sure what her thinking was. I think a lot of it was that it was just some, a choice that needed to be made by adults, not by uh, children, so that we could make that choice when we were older. But we certainly weren't considered um, adults as teenagers. Because there's three of us, um, none of us were allowed to shave. Um, I think my one sister just did it anyhow. She just ignored my mother's rules, and then my my younger sister, my youngest sister, she didn't shave. And probably the fact that I didn't shave probably made it easier for my younger sister, knowing somebody else who didn't. Basically, it hadn't occurred to me that you could not remove your body hair, and then I saw a friend with armpit hair, and I was like, "You can do that," <laughs> and it was pretty much like, "You can do that. Fine, I will do that," <laughs> kind of thing. It was only literally about four or five years ago when I tentatively took my first steps into feminism. And I remember going to a meeting, I think I just happened to be in the town, happened to see it, it was called Lady Fest Leeds, I think. And I went along to a workshop and there was a woman who was holding the workshop who had a summer dress, hairy armpits and hairy legs. And I remember sitting there going, oh my gosh, she's so brave. She's so brave. And, and, I, and I remember being almost fixated by this woman who was so brave as to stand up. And I was thinking, I wonder what people think about her when she's in the bus. I wonder if people say things to her. I wonder why she's done that. And all these questions going on in my head because it completely challenged everything. Because shockingly, up until that point, I had not seen a woman publicly. Um, so that's the first real consciousness raising point I, I can remember. Um, but it wasn't for a good year or two after that before I started to think about doing it myself. People do tend to stare. Um, sometimes I think that's just because most people haven't really seen women who have their kind of natural body hair intact. Um, because it is quite rare. So I understand that from a sort of, wow, surprised perspective. That can be difficult at times. Um, sometimes I think it's kind of funny um, and I quite like shocking people because it's so stupid, you know, it's, it's hilarious that, that me not shaving my armpits is somehow shocking. I think in school there was a lot of kind of like, because it was at such a young age, there was a lot of bullying, a lot of kind of like everything from like parents to strangers, pretty much, people say stuff. And 
I hate saying this, but you get used to it. And I don't think that you should have to get used to it because it shouldn't be an issue, but you, you do. It's sort of a given now. I don't remember any, any occasion apart from, I guess I would have been 17, and I had a friend, a male friend, who, who made quite a lot of comments about my underarm hair to the point where um, I did feel sort of bullied about it and I and I said to him, fine, I'll shave it. And, and I did. And and then I, you know, I said to him, I was like, look, do you have a big difference? You know, are you happy now? Do you, what do you think? Like, you know, and he, he said, he's like, oh yeah, no, it doesn't really look that different at all, does it? And, like, and, and then just stopped and never said anything again. And then I never shaved my armpits after that. And it really was done more to just sort of show the person like, you know, one, you know, are you happy that you pressurized me into doing something so stupid as this? And also just that really aesthetically, it made no real difference. The only negative response I've ever had, ever, has been from a work colleague about two months ago. Now, I'm very open as a feminist at work. And the other day they were talking about um, shaving and hair and I had to jump in and I just said, I don't. And the man opposite me said, well, he didn't say anything actually. He went, ugh, 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 in a work meeting. And I looked over and I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. And, and I said something that sounds a bit silly now, but it was the only thing that popped into my head. And I leaned over and just went, you are so socialized. <laughs> And that was the best I could come up with. I think at the moment, having no body hair at all is kind of fetishised in that um, I think it's partly like the you get the kind of uh, prepubescent, yeah. uh, no pubic hair look, which is kind of... It makes you look like a child. Yeah, it's a bit Which corny. I always, I find that a little creepy that they're trying to make women look like children. Like children and yeah. I mean, I think it's mostly about profit. I think if they could make a lot of profit making women look really hairy, they'd do that instead. So. <laughs> but uh, Well, you could have a lot of um, shampoo and conditioner sold. Yeah, I could be like dyeing it or having like curling it with little curling tongs or something. But, uh, but I think it's... Uh... It's a very arbitrary standard that that's just been imposed on us that women shouldn't have body hair. And I think, I was going to say, I think that is, that's a really stupid idea because naturally women do have body hair. And I think pushing women to conform to this ideal that isn't at all um, how women actually are or what women actually look like um, is part of a pretty oppressive way of treating women in society. It's um, kind of treating the female body as if it's something wrong with it. I'm from Pakistan, um, well my parents, so I was born here, um, and we're Muslims, so there's a lot of really nice kind of cultural influences that kind of happen around this conversation of body hair. Um, with body hair, in terms of an Islamic perspective, um, women, oh, women shouldn't shave. Um, as in using kind of razors because I don't know the heavy details on this but um, I was been told that um, metal shouldn't touch women's body in those sets of shaving um, so we had kind of used depletory creams, waxing etc around that but we can't have pubic hair that's longer than a grain of rice um, and same with armpit hair um, that's more of a religious kind of um, take on it like if you don't remove that hair you're kind of um, prayers won't be accepted because you won't be fully clean um, so you have to kind of clean yourself before you pray that's both for men and women so both men and women with armpit hair and pubic hair um, I take off my armpit and my pubic hair at one time of Ramadan when you kind of have to be clean so it's Ramadan now and so it, it does sort of play a role because I kind of I do take off hair in the sense that you know when I have to religiously but apart from that if I don't have to in a religious sense I probably won't People have a, a complex relationship, I think, with body hair. Um, I think that it, even in since I was young, I think people's feelings about it have changed. I think of when I was younger, what the people's expectations of what they would shave would have been their armpits and their legs. But I remember people saying, well, people in France don't shave their armpits. People in Italy don't shave their armpits. Well, certainly now, if you go to Italy or, or France, women do tend to shave their armpits as well. 
um, in terms of like your pubic region. I don't remember anyone ever discussing shaving that. And now you just have a sort of a wide variety of ways that people shave that area. And um, I think people think about it in terms of an impression of cleanliness and and that I mean certainly with like the you know pubic region and armpits I think in particular there's that impression that there's some sort of cleaning benefit to it I think uh, most men don't realize that lots of women have facial hair because women are so uh, keen on removing it they just don't think it's an issue because and also you don't see adverts for it you don't see women on television like waxing this part of their face or where it joins with the eyebrows here. You never get to see hair in hair removal adverts. It's already gone. <laughs> Just like a completely smooth leg. It's Let's already paint gone. Paint a so, waxing strip on it and rip yeah, it off. It's really ridiculous. That is when you put your best foot forward, followed by your most beautiful leg, your smooth, sexy Venus leg. So with Venus, let's get your goddess shown. Venus, reveal the goddess in you. Nothing else. Okay, and. Yeah, looking at your eyes this way, that's great. I was going to say, is my elbow in your hip? Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, so let's see how we're going to do that. Is that better? I see both fits, that's great. Um, yeah, um, Zoltan, if you, like, you want to put your arms even... Uh, kind of, how are you doing? Something like that. Just like that, that's nice, that's fine. Yeah. What do you think about women and body hair? What do I think about it? Um, it's one of those things where it's complete... I think it should be the person's own options whether they choose to remove well they might choose to remove their moustache and leave everything else yeah. natural i think that's completely up to the person or at least it should be mm. but we are brainwashed from very young to remove body hair mm. it, it's one of those things that's just expected of us i remember when i was a kid and there was a single girl and she was like you know how do you deal with it you know and it was we were at mosque and um and she was i can't remember her name and, and I was like, I don't know, I just do. And I think I was about like 14, 15 when she asked. And then she was like, I don't know. And she's like, when I'm old, I want to take it off. And I'm like, take off what? There's nothing there. And you sort of don't realize how at a young age, they're so hyper aware of something that probably not even there half the time. What, they're nine and suddenly they're like, oh God, I must shave my legs. And I'm like, you're a nine year old. There is literally nothing there. I have no idea what you're on about. And it's, it's yeah, it's quite interesting, but also very, very frightening. I think. True free choice means that we can walk down the street with hairy legs, hairy armpits, a short dress, whatever we like, and it will make no difference to the treatment that we receive. And the fact is that if a young girl now who is 15, 16 years old decides not to shave, she will get lambasted. She will. And that is not free choice. That is being forced to conform. Um, being forced to fit an ideal, and that goes as far as um, I sort of see it as a continuum, if you like. And the continuum is not the right word, it's just a mass assault on women and their right to be. You know, I still get those moments where I, where I just feel really insecure and I think, oh, you know, why am I doing this? And it takes, you know, quite a lot of, you know, determination to, to get over those feelings and to kind of force yourself to just stay the way that you want to stay um, and not kind of give in to the pressure and then I imagine that that's what it's like for most women who maintain their body hair and don't remove it. I think there's loads of days where I go there and I'm like oh, fuck it. I wish I hadn't, I wish I could just kind of hide away and you know sometimes you want to get on the tube and not have anyone look at you and you just kind of want to be invisible but yet you can't because it's such a kind of prominent thing. Um, I think everyone goes to that, regardless of you know what you have, whether it's someone's kind of, oh, they're not a bit into it, maybe because my nose is a bit bumpy, or maybe their hair's a bit funny. Everyone has those days. I think it's just about you know what it is to someone else. Is you know this might be a lot for me, but it's not a lot for someone else. I've come across a few people who seem to think of body hair as a bit of a fetish, which um not quite sure whether I find that flattering or, or whether I find that a bit creepy but in general it seems to be guys are brainwashed too to think the women don't have body hair so you get sort of the almost immediate image of disgust and then they actually think about it and then it doesn't seem to bother many people I think it's quite sad that it's so body hair is so kind of 
linked to attractiveness, like the lack of body hair in women is so linked to attractiveness in most people's heads. Um, personally, I, I actually think it's really attractive um, on women. I find it really, yeah, I don't know, I think it just looks, um, it looks adult, you know, it's quite sensual, I think as well, but most people don't see it that way. I think for me, I've always thought that certain hair, like armpit hair and, and, and pubic hair, I think is actually aesthetically on men and women equally attractive. So I, and I don't, and I'm, I'm not quite sure why I've always thought that because culturally there's no reason why I should think that in particular armpit hair is more aesthetically pleasing, but I think women look more attractive with armpit hair than when they don't have it as a personal um, opinion. It's kind of like a trade-off that I have to make that, you know, if I'm, if I'm gonna own myself, I have to give up some of that sort of um, comfort of being considered attractive and comfort of being considered um, the right kind of woman. You know, I'm doing this because I want to um, claim my own body as my own. If it makes you more confident to take it off, then take it off, okay? But don't take that decision so easily, because I, when I was 15, I hated it, and I really didn't like having hair anywhere, and I was like, parents, I want to take it off, I want to take it off. And they were like, look, so wait till you're 18, and then we'll, no, we'll, we'll do whatever you feel right then. And having that kind of, that, was it, that kind of period of waiting and kind of, you know, being like, it's okay, I, I'm 18, and suddenly you realise, you know, there's so many more things in life. It feels liberating not to shave. It absolutely feels liberating, truly. And that might seem like a silly thing to say because it's so little really, it's such a little thing for me to decide to grow my hair. But in the face of all the opposition that we see every day around us, it sometimes feels like quite a big thing and I feel quite proud, um, but it, most of all I feel liberated. Final, final place. And this place has a lot of pollen, so I'm sorry in advance. <laughs>